Mario. Cruising along in the Pacific to a Mario. Meanwhile, we're still waiting to get beyond the F name storm in the Atlantic. Yeah. So a tale of two basins, so to speak, the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season, it has all but arrived. And as we sit here on the eve of September 10th, the climatological peak, not even an area to watch now in the Atlantic Basin. Last year, you might remember, we had a brief break. It was yeah. from late August to the first week of September, but then exactly one year ago today, the sixth named storm formed. Yeah, Hurricane Francine. It's what ended a nearly three-week lull in tropical activity last season. It was able to strengthen to a Category 2 hurricane before making that landfall in Louisiana. Andy Hazelton, associate scientist at the University of Miami, is joining us now. All right, Andy, um, even our hurricane specialist, Brian Norcross, said yesterday, we don't know exactly why we have this current lull, but there are clues. So if you can this morning put your investigator hat on, we need it. Uh, what stands out to you when we look at these limiting factors? Is there a smoking gun that we have? So I think it's a combination of things. Um, we had, you know, Invest 91L, that disturbance out over the Central Atlantic that models were really um, kind of excited about developing for a few days and turned out to not really be able to produce any thunderstorm activity. And, and so obviously that makes it hard to get a tropical storm or hurricane. And so that's one clue. The atmosphere, there's just a lot of sinking air, a lot of stability, meaning the air can't really rise. That's something we've seen for the last several weeks. And it seems to still be an issue. Um, as we kind of move later into the month, um, with a large scale pulse of rising air moving across right now, you know, that's kind of in the Pacific, helping spawn Kiko and some of those other storms. So that may give us a boost. Um, there's also just the, the large scale jet stream pattern is, is not really favorable right now. We've got the big dip off the East Coast, another big dip kind of over the Eastern um, part of Africa or just off the West Coast of Africa and sort of tugging on these waves. And, and so it, it's a really a combination of things. And uh, the waters are still warm. Um, your shear is still low in the main development region there. So we, we do expect things will pick up at some point. And, you know, certainly uh, like we saw last year, you can get big impacts um, late in the season with like we had, did with Helene and Milton. So um, just, you know, kind of got to keep watching, but it's definitely unusual to be this quiet at peak. Yeah, I mean, we are kind of throwing a bunch of different reasons as to why it could be. And perhaps, as you mentioned, you know, it's kind of a combination of everything working against these storms. One of the ones, you know, it's been interesting to see, you talked about, uh, the lack of instability and, and more of a stable environment over especially the tropical Atlantic. So that air, its ability to really rise hasn't really been present. So I, I, you know, it is interesting to see Invest 91L. I was trying to think, and I don't know if you can recall, a time when we had an Invest that went from 90% chance of development to zero. So really quickly ending any potential run at a tropical storm there. Yeah, it's very, it's pretty unusual. Um, typically, um, I, I can't remember the last few years. I think there's maybe been one in the Pacific a couple of years ago, but in the Atlantic, it's been a while since we've seen, especially with you know all the models, usually when you have the GFS and the Euro model and, and Canadian, when they all kind of agree like that, that's usually a, a pretty good indicator that something's gonna develop. And so the fact that um, you know it fell off so quickly was a little bit surprising just to a hint at you know, how hostile the Atlantic is right now. And uh, perhaps there were several forecasters that were burned a bit because wondering if this would be the next name mm -hmm. storm. And we always we always say, do not assign a name until that name <laughs> has been assigned by the mm -hmm. NHC. But I do appreciate your posts on X. Um, you're a wealth of knowledge, and, and we, we have the privilege of, of getting that on social media from you. But I like what you said because you said your approach to tropical cyclone development now um, for going forward for at least the rest of the season is, I'll believe it when I see it. And I can appreciate that. Mm -hmm. You were talking about <laughs> forecast model inconsistency though, because models have been showing a storm, notably ensembles, then they don't, then they do, then they don't. So I guess without getting too much into the physics, any insight into why ensembles seem to be flailing, especially in the, in the current moment? Kind of what it tells me when you see this on and off signal like that is that, um, you know, we're, we're get kind of on the edge of being favorable for development. You know, it makes sense we're in September and the MGO is trying to come, you know, that pulse of rising air. So it tells me that, you know, models, you know, if they're just a little bit off, they show things getting just over the hump and, and getting some development. But, you know, if they're just a little bit off, if things are just a little bit too dry, too stable, then the storm doesn't develop. And so that's why we kind of see this up and down signal and, and you know, back and forth. And, um, you know, like I said, this kind of just tells me that we're going to need to see a, a system actually get out there over the water and, and maintain thunderstorms. And once we see that, then we'll have a little more confidence that, you know, maybe we'll get our next storm uh, forming. It's always one of those tough conversations to have because, we welcome how quiet it is, right? Because these storms can be devastating, if not catastrophic when you have a landfall. Yeah. But it does make you wonder, 
why it is so quiet. And we saw 58% of the season to go. I think one thing that's been interesting, at least from my perspective, and, and I'm sure you've been watching too, um, talking about some of the models and, and being able to latch on, but the AI models have also been really interesting to see how they perform given the season. And they function quite differently yeah. from our physics-based models uh, and taking into account um, more of history and, and what we've seen before. Um, I don't know if you've been following any in particular, but in, in regards to the season right now, have, has AI performed better as you'd expect? Has it been surprising? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's done pretty well from what I've seen. Um, I, I did uh, analysis some of the stats for Aaron and Google's um, DeepMind AI um, ensemble or you know, model did very well overall. Um, and I know NHC is working with them to evaluate that this year. So that's good to see. Um, in terms of you know formation, um, like the ECMWF AI model did well with um, the last one, 91L was one of the few models to not develop it. But we've seen other cases where, you know, kind of 10 days out or a week out, some of the AI models have been a little too aggressive with developing. And so we'll have to really go back after the season and, and look at the full suite of data and, and do a full, you know, comprehensive evaluation, mm -hmm. um, you know, like we do for all the models. But I think the early signs are encouraging that this could be a useful tool for forecasters. The way of the future, but in a lot of ways, it's the present, right? Um, Andy, before <laughs> yeah. we let you go, uh, how was the storm yesterday? Do, does Miami feel very dry right now, <laughs> being under an extreme drought? How, how's the, the current nature of, of the weather in South Florida? Yeah, it's been a weird year. We yeah. For most of June and July, we, we didn't have any rainy season. It was one of the latest starts, but the patterns kind of changed the last you know, couple of weeks. It's been wetter, um, kind of have this, this big trough, this dip in the jet, that's sort of bringing a lot of moisture to the Caribbean. And so we're trying to catch up, but uh, you know we'll see. Um, although anytime this time of year we can get um, a lot of rain and, and sort of break the drought without getting a hurricane, we'll take it. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's my sentiments as well. And hey, a quick mm -hmm. three inches in a single day. I mean, only in in mm -hmm. you know subtropical <laughs> climates can you get something like that and say, yeah, yeah a few roads flooded, but. Overall, we're pretty good. Appreciate yeah. your time. Thanks for joining us this morning. Andy Hazleton, Associate Scientist at the University of Miami. Thank you. Thank you.